So you're changing it up. <laughs> Hi everybody, welcome to another. <laughs> Hi everybody, I'm Mary Lou and this is another episode of Blue Collar Wine Review. Can we start over? Sure. Because can you Hi everybody, welcome to another, because that's what we've been doing, and then you go, hi, I'm Mary Lou, at, or I'm Mary Lou at the end, and I say, I'm Dave. No, I was just trying to change it up a little bit. Oh, okay. It's okay. Well, change it up, go nope. ahead. Nope. I'll edit it. And I'm Dave. Oh. And today we're going to talk about... Local vineyards. Uh, your local area, local farmers supporting them and getting out there and tasting some of your local wines. Uh, I know in our area, a big uh, grape that uh, is prevalent is a muscadine mm -hmm. um, that grows in our area. So if you get the chance in your local area, go out and visit those wineries and try their wines if they have a tasting room. That'll help you also mm -hmm. uh, in your tasting uh, journey and adventures. You'll find uh, out what you like, what you don't like, what's too sweet, maybe what's too dry, that kind of thing. Like Prosecco, I'm not huge on Prosecco. And I'll be honest with you, um, and I'm sure that we'll have a, a vlog on um, champagnes or brutes or something with bubbly, but I'm not a huge fan of bubbly <laughs> at all. So, so, But sometimes I do like a little bit of the sweeter stuff. Like I like the Sauternes, I like the Eisenreibe, Joseph mm -hmm. Phelps. Yeah. Uh, some of the... Um, I like port, and I know you don't like no, port. No, I don't like port. Um, so it's you know I like some some sweet things, but I also but I don't I, for some reason the bubbly stuff. But again, like we've said before, it's all about what you like. Get yeah. out there and try it, and uh, you'll find quickly what you like and what you don't like. Um, in the beginning, I didn't like white wines at all. I had only tasted a few Chardonnays and some white Zinfandel and things like that, and. I had no interest in them whatsoever. But when you get out there and you start tasting different uh, regions, especially, I love the German Riesling now. It's one of my favorite white wines. Um, but I would never have known that if I just hadn't gone out and started trying different ones. Definitely. Yeah. Expand like, it. Even if you, <laughs> oh no, you had a bad experience on yeah. some not very good $5 wine <laughs> yeah. somewhere sometime. <laughs> and you know you get there and you go out and you try it mm -hmm. then you expand your horizons and you're like well oh wow um, so go ahead and try it anyway you don't like it you don't like it right but uh, give it a try give it a, a few tastes and see if it uh, if it if it's good because yeah. gee and know. again the glass makes all the difference if you buy a set of glasses um, that you'd want to use at home that's going to be Another indicator of what you like is if it tastes different in that glass than it does in the restaurant glass, then you know you're on to something. Absolutely. Yeah. Because so, we didn't we, we didn't realize that the glass made that much difference either mm -mm. until we tried it. We were actually amazed um, on what the difference was between a regular Joker glass and a real glass that's made for that grape. Definitely, because yeah. especially on, on whether it was a Sauvignon Blanc or the Chardonnay, and they took it from a Chardonnay glass and put it in a... Um, a really a cab glass. Cab glass, and then there was another type of glass that was almost like a like a champagne, mm -hmm. sort of Flute. fluted glass, mm -hmm. which you really shouldn't serve champagne from what we understand, uh, but we can research that and go back. But um, trying it in that, putting it in the cab glass, I mean, in the Chardonnay and the cab glass going back and forth, um, it was totally different mm -hmm. taste. It actually tasted horrible in the Cabernet glass. And then in the Chardonnay glass, it was like, oh man, this is really good. Mm -hmm. So yeah. Try them side by side if you can. Yeah, definitely. definitely. Yeah. So gl the glass really does make a difference. Um, what we're going to talk about today is some red blends. And the first one is from France. Uh, this is from Chateau, Chateau Moya, and we found this wine um, through a tasting that this vineyard actually put on at one of our local retail stores. Um, we gave this five stars. It's absolutely delicious. Um, it'll run you about $25 a bottle. It has dark fruity uh, notes on the nose, anise and raspberry on the palate. 
and it has a slightly dry finish. So if you're not sure about the dryness, um, that would be a good place to start to see if you like wines that are slightly dry or maybe a little more dry. Dave likes them a little more drier than I do, um, but this is one we can definitely agree on and it's it's really good. It um, the last time we had it was with charcuterie uh, a couple weeks ago, um, but we've also had it with beef stew and it was absolutely delicious. Absolutely. Uh, another one we just had recently is a Rustenburg um, John X Merriman and we gave it three stars and it averages anywhere around $26 out there in the market uh, per bottle and um, you'll find uh, notes of uh, mold plums, dark cherries on the nose and the palate, uh, notes of cracked pepper and cigar cedar box on the finish. So you're kind of wondering cigar cedar box, how do you come up with that? Well, go smell a cedar cigar box <laughs> and then imagine that taste, that smell. Um, and that's kind of where it comes. Uh, it is a mix of Cab Merlot, Petit Verdot, Cab Franc, and Malbec. It's got a lot of different grapes in it. It's a great blend. Um, so when we, like I said, we gave it three, three stars. Mm -hmm. Um, which is not is another indication the price of the bottle doesn't always mean that it's going to taste better than a ten dollar bottle we've had some amazing bottles of wine that were under fifteen dollars and then not so good some that are over thirty so um again it just depends on what you like yeah there's some really good i mean uh, we haven't rated it and it's coming up on one of our our blogs our video blogs um there's one uh, we're actually, we're doing three from one particular winery, mm -hmm. and one of them's a Riesling that's right around ten dollars. It's made here in the United States, and it, it we've rivals it. that German one. It's it's, good. it's it's close, and it, yeah. and and for an everyday, you know, uh, we took it to a concert yeah. uh, where they have a table event where you can set up a little table and you have your your food with you, and and uh, and, and we took a couple bottles with some friends, and and we really enjoyed that uh that ten dollar riesling so i mean it's it's possible and there are those out there that that you know once you go tasting and find ones that you like that uh, you can go to uh you know on, on different occasions just uh, every day go ahead um our last one is another um wine from joel gott you'll know by the end of this that joel gott is one of our favorite wineries uh, this happens to be a 2011 Alakai. It is a Grenache blend. We gave it four and a half stars and it averages about $15, $16 a bottle. Um, it has light fruit on the nose with oak and spice. It has black cherries, hints of pepper and black plums uh, throughout the smooth, lengthy finish. And again, it's a Grenache blend, so it has different um, Grenache grapes in, in that blend. And it really, um, yeah, on that blend, it really, um, I wouldn't say mimics, but goes along with a lot of uh, blends from France. It really is a great blend, and it kind of goes along with some of those type of, uh, whether it's a Bordeaux, left bank, right bank, but it's, re it's really good. And, um, and of course, that's an unsolicited uh, that we like Joel Gott wineries, <laughs> um, but we do. Um, it's a it's a, a, a valued uh, priced wine, and you get a good value. You get a good mm -hmm. wine to drink yeah. um, that could be you know middle of the week yeah great dinner, everyday wine <clears throat> everyday wine um, so that you could you know have a nice meal and have a good glass of wine mm -hmm. at a very inexpensive price. And everything they put out, it's it's very consistent across their line. You're not mm -hmm. gonna. At least we haven't found anything that we did not like from that vineyard. Yep, absolutely. Well, thank you everybody for uh, tuning in and we appreciate it. We hope you enjoy our video blog on uh, wines. Um, you can find us at uh, YouTube. You can find us on Facebook, on Instagram, and Twitter. Or, and you can find us on our website, bluecollarwinereview.com Thanks everybody, have a great day. And remember, drink responsibly. Yeah.